A new study shows that drinking sugar-sweetened beverages with either fructose or sucrose significantly increases the amount of fatty acids and saturated fat produced in your liver, and it can do it without even having weight gain or caloric excess. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And after that intro, you might be like, what? What does this mean? Why do I care about this? But this is a really interesting study that, that I think deserves a little, a little more diving into because there's this thought that, one, people say the body doesn't like to convert sugar into fat and that it's an inefficient process that only happens with caloric excess or only happens with weight gain. Well, this study would suggest something different. And the other is it shows that whether you're consuming fructose or sucrose, which is a combination of glucose and fructose, the risk seemed to be the same, but a little less so with, with just glucose itself. And also there were effects on the lipids, the small dense LDL increase. So let's talk about the study a little bit because it's important to, to understand sort of the physiology behind how our body handles uh, sugar, even without weight gain or excess calories. So First point though, this was in young, healthy males. So think about what the effect might be if somebody was already insulin resistant or overweight. It might be even worse, but so young, healthy males with an average age of 22 years old and an average weight of 71 kilograms. So not overweight and they, they didn't have any comorbid conditions like metabolic disease or insulin resistance or diabetes. Now what they did was for seven weeks, they were randomized to either drink sugar-sweetened beverages every day with fructose or with sucrose or with glucose or to a control group that didn't drink any. And what they found was there was minimal, if any, change in weight. Um, there was no significant increase in the amount of calories that they took in. So it was pretty much just the sugar-sweetened beverage that had this effect. And what they found was there was a significant increase in the, in the conversion, in the production of triglycerides or of fatty acids in the liver. These were saturated fatty acids. So this is what one part that's really interesting because tests that measure saturated fatty acids, saturated fat in your blood or in your liver, and you can say, see, saturated fat is bad for you. You eat saturated fat, it shows up in your liver and your blood. Well, here, there was no increase in saturated fat. This was a study that just increased fructose or sucrose, sugar, pure sugar, and that resulted in increase in saturated fat. So I think that's an important physiologic concept because it's not just you eat fat, you eat saturated fat, you get saturated fat in your blood. Our body is complex and we actually do convert sugar into saturated fat. We do it in our liver. It congests our liver with fat. Very important concept, and that can lead to fatty liver. And remember, this was they only did these tests after six weeks um, of the trial, so it wasn't like this was you know months or years of of sugar sweetened beverages like many people in America and in the world are consuming now. Another interesting part, which is near and dear to my heart, is the percentage of small dense LDL went up. So you know LDL are housed in particles. LDL cholesterol, their cholesterol is in LDL particles, and you can either have the large sort of buoyant particles or the smaller denser particles. And the literature is pretty clear that the smaller and denser particles are more atherogenic, more concerning, more likely to lead to cardiovascular disease. And after just six weeks of these sugar sweetened beverages, the LDL was already changing to the small dense LDL particles. So that's pretty concerning. We know sugar is quote unquote bad and we shouldn't be drinking sugar sweetened beverages. You know, most people know that, but there's still this concept of everything in moderation, right? If, um, as long as you are exercising, as long as you're burning off your calories, everything in moderation is perfectly fine. This study clearly shows that without excess calories, without significant weight gain, in only six weeks, your body has seen significant, significant changes to that sugar-sweetened beverages. So if we need more evidence that everything in moderation probably doesn't work and that avoiding sucrose and fructose-sweetened beverages is something that we really should focus on, this gives us even more evidence about that and highlights the complexity of our body that we do turn sugar into saturated fat, into fatty acids in our liver and has nothing to do with the saturated fat that we're eating. So what's the take home? Don't drink sugar-sweetened beverages. Drink coffee, drink tea, drink water. If you need something, you can add a non-nutritive sweetener like erythritol or stevia or something like that, but even better if you can do without it. But get away from the sugar. Don't listen to Coca-Cola. 
Don't listen to Nestle. Don't listen to the message that it's okay to have it in moderation as long as you're burning it off. It isn't. And this study gives us even more evidence for that. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Hope this was helpful. We'll see you again on YouTube here for more Diet Doctor News.